Hey guys, welcome. Um, we're going to take a look at total resistance and circuit analysis in this. I'm hoping to do this pretty quick. Um, it is a pretty easy concept, um, at least understanding the totals. And I think the example problem, you can take a look at part number two here. I can use the total resistance to calculate um, RIVP, just asks for resistance, current, voltage, and power of every single resistor in a circuit. You're going to see that we're going to finally be able to quantify everything in these circuits. Um, so first things first, total resistance. Um, you can see that we have our series case and our parallel case from class today. Um, you will note that our total, a lot of you guys already discovered this, is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now the nice thing about this calculation, and we're going to generalize this, it really doesn't matter how many resistors you have. So the actual equation for total resistance in series um, is going to be R1 plus R2 plus, and it really doesn't matter how many resistors you have. If you only have two, you just do R1 plus R2, but you can go all the way up to R to the nth. If you have 100 resistors in series, just keep adding them all together. So that's what that equation is telling you. Second circuit in this case is R1, R2, R3. Um, <coughs> the troublesome case is if we were to take a look at the total resistance, so again, if we wanted to simplify this, um, the total resistance um, is going to be our total, and it's a little bit different in this case. It's actually going to be 1 over our total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now, you will see some books, there's other physics books, they'll actually um, change this around and they'll actually give you an equation for R total, which is equal to just the inverse of everything that I just wrote out there, which looks like so. So that is, again, the inverse of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Um, the reason why some physics books will write it like this um, is because a lot of students will calculate this portion, the 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and they'll forget to actually take the inverse of that number to get your final answer. Um, I will always see it on a test, this, this unit, so please make sure um, that you actually go through the final step and get R total. But I do like the simplicity of this um, that um, style, so that is the way that we'll use it. So for our parallel case, um, just to make it a little bit more general, it doesn't matter how many resistors you have, 1 over R total is going to equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus dot dot dot, doesn't matter how many you have, if there's a hundred in parallel, um, plus one over r to the nth. And these are our two final equations for the year um, in order to get the series and parallel setups. So you look at this, we can go on over here, checkbox, I can calculate total resistance for any multiple bulbs. Keep in mind, if we just wanted to simplify R2 and R3, we can do that just by going R2 plus R3. Remember, R1 is still there, but we can start simplifying different chunks of this as well, different sections. So let us take a look at this example problem, and what I have drawn for you is a um, circuit that is both a series parallel and there's also another set of series in there. Um, so you'll notice to analyze one of these circuits, to actually start getting our totals, you're going to actually have to go deepest into the circuit and start breaking it down into the little sections. So you'll notice I will always cruise into the parallel section and I will try to find series cases of bulbs in the parallel section first. So I find one right there and what I do is I just redraw the circuit very quickly and I redraw it um, with a new resistor present. So you'll notice that this 3 and this 2 have now just become one resistor. So I got the 6 ohm resistor here, I have the 20 ohm resistor still here, and you'll notice the 3 and the 2 is going to become a 5 ohm resistor. They are in series, so we just add them together like that. Um, 10 volt battery still stands true. That does not change, so don't make any changes to that. Um, continuing on. Now we need to simplify it um, even more so. So I go into my parallel case. I notice that my parallel case 
is nothing but a parallel case now. There is no series involved with it, it can't be broken down into anything else. So now we can actually simplify this piece. So again, I redraw my circuit, I have my 6 ohm resistor there, and that parallel case now becomes just one single resistor. Again, the 20 ohm and the 5 ohm, the way that we do this is 1 over R total is equal to 1 over the 20 ohm resistor plus 1 over the 5 ohm resistor. You'll notice um, I will try to make these problems as easy as possible so that you'll notice that they are divisible. So you say, oh, wait a minute, 5 can go into 24 times. So we can actually write this as 20 fourths plus the 1 20th there. And you'll notice that we get 5 20ths. And remember, that is still equal to 1 over our total. So that means we have to take the inverse of this. And of course, if we do 20 divided by 5, that is equal to 4 ohms in this case is equal to that R total. So now I can go up to my circuit up here and I could call this guy 4 ohms. And this is 6 ohms and you'll see our final bit of our circuit can finally be simplified down into one single resistor attached to a 10 volt battery. And 6 plus 4 gives us 10 ohms and we have our final circuit right here. Let me just show you again, these two became that one resistor. The whole point of this um, is now you will note that we can calculate the current going through that 10 ohm resistor. All by going V total equals I total times R total. And in this case, 10 volts, I total we don't know, R total is 10. And you'll notice right out of the gates so we can calculate this. This is one amp here. So that means one amp is flowing through this section of this wire. But the nice thing is, is now we can trace back where that one amp should go in my original circuit. So if I were to go back, I notice that that one amp is actually um, <coughs> the piece that's going through that six ohm resistor. Um, so I'll notice tracing that all the way back because remember this resistor right here is just a breakup of um, the 6 um, ohm resistor and this 4 ohm resistor. That 1 amp is just going through both of those. If we were to go further back, is this 1 amp traveling through this 4 or this 20 ohm resistor and this 5 ohm resistor? No, because you'll notice going backwards again, it breaks up into parallel. So we can't make that judgment. However, if I were to go back, I could say, well, the voltage across this section right here must be true to the voltage across this section and the voltage across that section. Again, thinking about it, well, when we split up in parallel, what stays the same? Current doesn't, but voltage does. And so you'll notice when we start tracing all of our steps back, we could start to make a lot of really nice conclusions. That's why I like drawing each circuit separately. Um, Anyway, so we go all the way back, we notice that that one amp that we calculated is the current going through that 6 ohm resistor. So to make this, um, uh, to make this really easy to analyze, I always say create an RIVP table. And um, students at this point will usually ask, why an RIVP table? Well, first off, we write down the resistances. We have 6 we have our 3 ohm resistor, we have our 2 ohm resistor, and we have our 20 ohm resistor. Remember, this is all coming from the original circuit. Those are the ones that I care about, not these um, random ones that we created throughout the way. And I just learned that this 1 amp is going through there. Well, why do we like RIVP? Because I know V equals IR. So the minute I fill in two of these values, the 6 and the 1, you'll notice V is equal to IR. So what I got to do is just go 6 times 1, and that gives me the 6 volts. So now I have just discovered that there is 6 volts across this section right here. If that's 6 volts, you'll automatically see something really nice if we follow a nice loop here. So if I go through here, through this, and then go through that 20 ohm resistor and come back all the way around, you'll notice that that's 6 volts there. Well, total has to be 10 if I do this one trip around. So you'll notice that the 4 volts have to be through that 20 ohm resistor. 
and then the fun begins because if you notice the tw um, 4 volts goes there you can see that we can actually calculate the current that is going through here by doing V equals IR. So you'll notice what we can do is we can call that 20 fourths. Um, so again using V equals IR here we have 20 as our resistance we have I times there and we have V which we have just set as um, 4 and so we have 4 twentieths which is equal to I which in this case 4 twentieths can be simplified down into um, what is this going to be that's going to be 1 fifth so by that case we can go in here and we go 0 0.2 is going to be the current through that section right here so we can say that's 0 0.2 and then finally um, based upon this if one amp is flowing in here 0 0.2 goes in this section well that means the rest of the current must go that direction which means both the 3 ohm resistor and the 2 ohm resistor must get 0 0.8 as the current going through there. Um, again, flow in equals flow out allows us to say that because we were able to calculate that. And then going through, um, you can run a quick little calculation. 3 times 0 0.8 will give us 2.4 volts. And 2 times 0 0.8 will give us 1.6 volts. Notice how both of those added together give us a total of 4 volts. So these two with their voltages gives us the 4 volts that should be across that branch. That makes sense to us as well. So we can fill out a majority of this table very quickly all by going using our rules like flow in equals flow out, total voltage is e uh, in one loop is equal to zero, those types of things. Last but not least is power. And you'll notice power, as we all know, P is equal to IV. So you can go through here and you can actually run, again, quick and easy calculations. Um, 6 times 1 is going to be 6. Remember, these are all in watts. We got 2.4 times 0.8. You can do that. That's 1.92. We got 0.8 times 1.6 going to be 1.28, maybe the not the nicest, neatest numbers, and 4 times 0.2 is going to be 0 0.8. And you will see this is our RIVP table. And um, the reason why I usually do powers for one last thing to note is we can actually get the total power in this case, the total amount of energy per time that's being used here. And if you add all of these pieces up, you will see that we get a value of 10. Why is 10 a really nice, neat number to look at? Well, if we were to go back to our energy unit, we would know that the power total, in this case, power dissipated in this section should be equal to the power generated. Well, we're looking at all resistors here, so we've noticed that these resistors are using this energy per time um, by warming up or light bulbs or whatever they might be. But the question is how to get the power generated. Well, in this case, power generated is going to be equal to the voltage of the battery times the current of the battery. So P equals IV, again follows, but this in, this in this case is going to be coming from the battery. You'll notice the voltage of the battery is 10 volts, and the current through the battery is 1 amp, and you'll notice that those two are equal to each other. So I can see that the 10 watts here is equal to the 10 watts here. It means whatever I've done in this work is good. So an easy way to double check your RIVP table just double check power dissipate is equal to power generated. My apologies for this being a little bit long. However, this will give us a lot of time in class to really just kind of hammer out these problems and see if we are comfortable with, again, our two main targets for today. Um, I can calculate total resistance, and I can use this good old RIVP table to analyze circuits to the fullest. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our product for tomorrow. All right, have a good night. We'll see you all tomorrow.